Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. We are now going to take up the population interactions. Up till now, we have seen how living organisms respond to abiotic factors and what type of growth models are seen in them. Now here we will start with the interaction between living organisms. That means how do they interact with each other. These uh, organisms can be of the same species or different species. Here we are talking about interactions between the members of different species. And this is known as population interactions. There are various types of interactions which take place. And to understand this, we are going to use plus sign, minus sign and a zero. Plus sign indicates that a particular species gets benefited. Minus sign would indicate that a particular species is harmed. And zero sign or zero would represent that there is no effect to that particular species. And for this, we would draw a simple tabular representation. And that would have three things. Here we are going to write about say species A, this is species B and here we would write the type of interaction which is seen in this. And then we will take various examples, various types of interactions. Say the first one we are talking about is species A is benefited and species B is also benefited. Then in that case, the interaction is known as mutualism. So this is one interaction and every time we'll take one, we'll discuss this particular interaction and its examples. So here we are talking about mutualism. In mutualisms, mutualism, both the interacting species are benefited. That means they get benefit from the other species with which they are interacting. To understand this, we'll take some examples. Say the first example is of lichens. Lichens are associations of algae and fungi. So there are two species, algae and fungi. And both are getting benefited out of each other. Algae prepares food and fungi absorbs water and provides protection to the algae. So what is algal partner going to get? Algal partner is going to get the water which is absorbed by the fungus and it will also enjoy the protection which is provided by the fungus. And in turn, the fungus would get the, uh, the food which is prepared by algae because fungi are saprophytes. They cannot make their own food. Now, such type of mutual interaction, which is seen in case of lichens, has been given one term that is symbiosis. Symbiosis is a type of mutualism in which both the species permanently re remain associated with each other. So it is nothing but a type of mutualism where both species are permanently associated with each other. So if we separate the algae and the fungi, they won't be able to survive without each other. The second example again of mutualism is mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza is again a symbiotic relationship between fungi and the roots of higher plants. In this case, the fungus is going to absorb minerals, especially phosphorus. 
and in turn the plant is going to provide food, water and shelter. So food shelter is provided by the plant and minerals are absorbed by the fungus and the mineral which is mainly absorbed by fungus is phosphorus. It is seen that if from the root of the higher plant we remove these fungi the growth of the plant gets stunted. So that means this association is essential for normal growth of plants and this is also symbiotic relation. That means they would also remain associated with each other permanently. The third one where the association may not be permanent, it can be just a temporary association between the species and that is of the pollinator and plant. Now pollinators are normally insects. Most of the pollinators are insects but there are other pollinators also like animals and all. And the plant, these are the two uh, species. So this is an insect and this is the plant. So what is the pollinator going to do? It would help in pollination that is dispersal of the pollen grains and in turn the plant provides the food. Now this pollen is actually the food for the insect. Sometimes the nectar is also made available so the plant would have flower and in the flower there would be nectar. So the nectar becomes the food for this insect. So the insect is going to the plant in order to get the nectar which is the food or the pollen which can be the food and in turn would disperse those pollen grains from one flower to another flower. So this is mutualism and now because this insect is moving from one plant to the other it is not a permanent association. Now it is not always that the plant would provide the uh, nectar or the pollinator would help in pollination. Many a times it happens that insects, they visit the flower uh, getting or for the nectar and they just get the nectar but they do not pollinate. That means they are just taking that nectar but not helping in pollination. Such insects are known as cheaters. So what are cheaters? They take the nectar without helping in pollination. This is the, this is one example where the insect would get the nectar which is its food but the plant is not going to get benefited. So this is just one very unique kind of an example. Sometimes the plant gets benefited but the insect doesn't get benefited. Here the insect got benefited and the plant did not get benefited. So let us talk about one more example and that is written as pseudo copulation. In a particular type of orchid which is found in Mediterranean, the name of the orchid is Ophrys. Ophrys resembles, the flower of Ophrys resembles a female bee. Bees are the main pollinators. So uh, uh, these orchids, they are beautiful looking flowers and in case of Ophrys, the petals, their pattern, their color pattern and the shape, everything is exactly like the female bee. So now the male bee sits on this flower thinking of copulating it. So it sits on the flower thinking that it is a female bee and then when it goes to another flower thinking that that is another female bee, it is actually helping in transferring the pollen grain. But the ophrys is getting benefited but the bee is not getting benefited here. So resembles the female bee and the male sits over it, sits over the flower thinking of copulation. So the pollen grains get dispersed but there is no reproduction in case of the bees. So in these cases here 
the insect got benefited but the plant did not get anything or ben any benefit and here the plant got benefited because the pollens were taken but the insect or the pollinator did not get any advantage. We will take one more example again of pollinator and the plant and the, this example is of pollination in hypanthodium by a particular insect which is called the gall wasp. Now in case of hypanthodium what happens is hypanthodium is an inflorescence and in this inflorescence the male flowers are at the tip. There are two types of female flowers. The fertile female flowers, this is the fertile female flower which has the terminal style. So style is going to arise from here and there are some female flowers which are sterile. This is sterile female flower and the style is arising from the side. Such flowers are known as gall flowers. Now the pollination takes place by pollination is by blastophaga. Now this blastophaga enters into this hypanthodium, lays its eggs here and then goes out. Now while entry and exit the insect has to go through this narrow passage. So pollen grains are going to touch the body of the insect and when this insect or blastophaga enters another hypanthodium the pollens are going to fall. So the benefit which hypanthodium gets, hypanthodium is the inflorescence in ficus that is fig or even banyan tree, ficus bengalensis, ficus carica and all. So when it lays its eggs here it goes in and out and helps in pollination. And what is the benefit that this insect is going to get? As soon as the larvae hatch from this egg, they need to eat something. So they're going to eat this particular flower. There is no harm to the hypanthodium because this flower is anyway sterile. But the larva is going to get instant food. Plus, it is going to remain in this protected position. The mutual interaction is so much that if blastophaga is not there, pollination in case of hypanthodium would not take place. And if hypanthodium is not there, blastophaga will not be able to reproduce. And a similar kind of mutualism is seen in case of yucca flower. In yucca flower, again, pollination is done by yucca moth. And if one is there, the other one is also going to survive. And if one is eliminated, the other one will again get eliminated. So all these are the examples of mutualism, but if the association between the two species is permanent, then that kind of mutualism is known as symbiotic association or symbiosis. Now in the next part, we'll take up another type of interaction.